I really didn't pick the best time to start filming because it's about to hurricane. Awesome. On the bright side, we should be able to get all this stuff done today inside the garage, so we should be good. So yesterday, unexpectedly, I ended up getting a whole bunch of parts, all of this stuff right here, that I didn't plan on getting, but it worked out really, really well, because I need a Euro Rat support anyways, and I got a really nice aluminum radiator now. Off the work side through it, some interior pieces there, but it worked out really, really well. So today, we're gonna try and install, not all the pieces, but most, probably the Euro Rat support and the radiator, um, I'm gonna leave the off work side skirts for now off the car, probably gonna pan, make them look nice, and then the interior pieces will also get put in today as well. So we got the really nice off the work side skirts, same one that on Greg's car. Got a really, really mint set from Jersey, gonna repaint them, and they're already painted pretty nice, but I hit them one more time. They're a little bit different than the OEM ones. The OEM ones are like eight pieces in total, like six pieces in total. These ones are just one piece, more of a very flat look, where these ones kind of round down. But still, options are good, options are very, very good. I have both sets. Then I got these really nice chrome interior AC control pieces. This little bezel to hold my uh, my air ride control down the bottom, which is really nice. This one's metal, mine's plastic, so I like that. And then the Eurorat support over here. This section, all the Eurorat support, the aluminum radiator, another Euro rebar. Really, really nice setup. I'm excited for this. And like I said, I didn't plan on getting any of these parts at all yesterday, but when good deals pop up, you gotta snag them. Like, off-the-work side starts aren't too hard to come by. You can still order them new offline, um, but they're more expensive. They're a little bit of ship to you. Uh, the chrome piece is getting harder to find. The little bezel's custom made. And if you're a rat support, you can still order, but it's about 180 bucks off eBay, and it's coming from Slovakia. So you might see it in a month, two months. It could take a really long time. Or you have to find someone who's selling one already, and they gotta pay for shipping. It's a lot of stuff. It's easy when things pop up, grab good things. I could complain about the rain, but at least it's not 100 plus degrees. So, I mean, there's that. And the whole garage is so. This will be fun. Now, I have done this Euro Rad Support swap before. I'm not going to go full, full in depth on my car doing it. If you want to see the full video, I'll put it down below. I did it on Larry's car maybe four or five months ago. That was a way more in depth video than today. I'll cover the basics, but I'm not going to go super, super in depth. With it. So, in a short, all of this needs to come off your American Rad Support, your headlights, your grill, your bumper, the support. Uh, all the front end pieces need to come completely off before we can put that one in. So, first thing we're going to do, pull the headlights out, pull the grill off, and pull the bumper off. I've had a lot of people ask me what is the benefit of a European Rad support versus an American rad support and honestly only like two things I can think of one it makes your car more European and two it makes your e-codes fit without adapter brackets other than that it doesn't really do anything it looks a little bit different I guess it, it fits the more European theme of the car keeping it more vento or European um, but there's no performance aspect of it maybe it's a little bit lighter because it's fiberglass but there's no real super benefit for it but it makes your e-codes fit without brackets which is really nice so yeah Just about all the front end is off. The bumper, the rebar, the headlights, the grill, it's all off. Up next will be the jack of the car. Drain out the coolant from the radiator. Then I can start disassembling all these pieces and get this stuff pulled off. Coolant's just about all the way out. Our top two here and there. All this has been disconnected here and our hood latch cable's been pulled off so this should just lift right off and out. Not stuck in anything, nope, we're good. So this is now gone. Up next will be to get this section out of the condenser and the radiator support here. Well, not radiator support, but the radiator here and this bottom frame on out. Now, pulling the top support there I just took off off of a 2.0 American route support is super, super easy. Now, the hardest part of this entire process, which was annoying on Larry's car as well, is getting this either this AC line off or that AC. One of the two has to come off because on this route support, it is pulled straight off. I didn't take any of this off at all. But on the European route support, there's no holes in it. So you have to feed one of these AC lines through first before it actually go in. So what I did on Larry's car, I couldn't get this one to break free because it was like bending this and that one wouldn't come free. So what I did, all the way down to the compressor, you can see down in there where the line connects, like right there on the top right there. I pulled it off of there and I had to feed the entire thing through. So either way, you have to pull off one of the AC lines. Unless you have AC, no AC at all, then you're good to go. Um, but you have to pull one of the lines off and get the feed through. So up next, we're going to see if I can get one of these off. Maybe I'll get lucky and this will break free. If not, I'll just go right down to the condenser and pull it off from there. Good news, good news, good news. All right, so on Larry's car, I tried the same method and it didn't work, but on mine, it actually worked. So you use a vice grip on this little square block here to hold this tube. If you try and just break this nut free, just pulling on it, you will bend this. So holding one hand on here and on this hand, pulling it. Watch, ready? Ooh, 
We got it broke free. Let's go. I'm really glad that worked out because if not, you had to reach your hand way down there, pull it off from the compressor. It's just a pain. That's so much easier. <sighs> Good progress. Let's go. AC line has now been removed. At this point, everything is off except for this last bolt right there, the 10 millimeter, and that one there in the corner. After those two are out, this whole thing should just live right off. So this one came out no problem. This one over here, you can see the end of it's still in there, and it's actually right here. Yeah, this one didn't have a good time. Did not have a good time. But good thing is all this is leaving, so I don't ever use those at all. So we're in good luck. Now that all that has been removed, the last thing to take out will be this front, the secondary support right here. So there's two on that side, two on that side, take it off, and you are all set. I thought for a brief moment that I would try and use uh, the actual, the ratchet here to break these free. Go on air gun. Not gonna waste my time. Even though this might not break it free right away, but let's hope. Come on. So either this second bolt here in front is either stripped out, I'm hoping it's not, or it's a, it's a 16. So it was just spinning. It's just spinning around it. So either it's stripped or it's a 16. I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping it's a 16 or not stripped. Let's see. It's a 16. So at some point, this bolt got switched. I'm not really sure why. Please come off. This is now out of the way. I find it funny that I have three 16s. This is actually the right bolt that's supposed to be in there. And I had one 17 is a totally different random bolt. Only in my car, all the time this happens. Also make sure when you're pulling these bolts out, you have something to catch this subframe because if not, the whole thing will just drop. So make sure you have jack stands and jack, something to hold this port up. So when you pull these bolts out, it doesn't come flying to the ground. So now that that's out of the way, I can put the bolts back in and hook this back up and then we can go ahead and start putting that one in the car. Now the next step will be to swap over all the stuff from my 2.0 all the condenser, radiator, and fans into the Euro Sport here. Reason being because I cannot run a 2.0 how the hoses go. They don't match up with the VR6 radiator. So the VR6 radiator has the outlets on the top, right on the right side. So one and two. And then on the 2.0, they're both on the left side. One and two. Now I'm sure at least a few of you are wondering why am I doing all of this Euro Rat Sport swapping stuff now when I have a VR6 swap coming up, I have to pull it all back apart again later on. Two reasons. One, I partially traded um, my American Rat Support stuff and traded for Jersey's Zero Rat Support, his radiator, all that kind of stuff. So I got a really good deal on it, and in turn, giving him my stuff back. So when he sells the cars to show, whatever he does with it, he has a whole entire front end, and it's not just a nice big hole there. And then number two, the VR6 swap is still a little ways out. Um, I don't want to have a car just sitting here that doesn't run or not functional in the front. So I'm going to have a full functional put together car and what's time to do the VR6 swap we'll pull it apart again it doesn't take that long to do but in the meantime I want a running car if I need to drive it I want to be able to drive it we're gonna go hang out with all the guys the Mark 3 squad we're gonna do something I want to be able to drive the car up until the VR6 swap it'll be a running driving car good to go now that our European Rad Sport is fully disassembled our next step is to assemble all of these pieces back onto here now you'll notice the European Rad Sport has built in a spot for the fan the American one has its own fan shroud that the fans bolt into so we need to pull the fans out of here and screw them into that housing there once your four 10 millimeter screws are out, this should just lift right off. And then we'll go on to the next step. Fans are out, you no longer need this anymore. Next step is reassemble these into there and you can't really mess it up because each one only fits into its certain side. So you can't necessarily mess this step up. The 2.0 fans are now in. Last to do is put the condenser and the radiator in, bolt it all up, and then this should all be done and then it's getting back into the car. Here we have a fully reassembled European Rats port with all 2.0 internals, condenser, radiator, and fans in the back. All you gotta do now, get put it back in the car.
just about there. All I have left is the grill and it's done super close. Super, super close. I have to say, I love how nice the headlights fit now because they just bolt right up and they're super solid. Mine were solid before, but I had to do a lot of like zip tying and these weird bracket things, and now it just fits, and that makes me so much happier. I like it a lot. And I like how like big and like it's like flat, very nice, like flat top. I thought about painting this, but I really like this super nice little like logo plate thing right there. So I don't know if I'm gonna paint or not. I can't decide. Should I paint? When I paint the whole bay this color, the whole bay is going to be this color. Should I paint the rat support to match this, or should I leave the rat support, the, the ABS, like the black plastic? I can't decide. Help me. And we are done. I have to say the front end fits together so much better. You can make the American rat support and like that kind of stuff work, um, but when you have European E-Codes, the Vento grill, the Vento bumper, it fits so much better when you actually have the right support. And it might not look too much different, but like the, the lines through here are way smoother. Like nice even through here the lines down here across the bottom i'm very pleased with this very very pleased with this and like it's like it's sturdy like it's super super sturdy now the biggest test is going to be when i go ahead and close this hood will it actually latch properly i left the latch i was on it i didn't change it for my other rat support i'm just praying when i shut this it is click it'll be really nice i want the truth i'm gonna do it one-handed wait make sure hold on hold on hold on okay the hood latch is hooked up that would have been really bad all right let's go one-handed, super gentle. Let's see. Let's gonna drop from here. Not quite. No. Gonna need some adjustments. I lifted it back up and shut it a bit harder, and it did actually close and latch. It is a bit high though. The gap here is a bit too much. I'm gonna open it back up, uh, adjust the latch down a little bit, and we should be good to go. All right. I've dropped the latch down a bit further. Let's give it another try. I'm gonna shut it a bit harder this time. Not quite. <laughs> Dang it. All right, so I got it. I missed the official closing of it, and it closed absolutely perfect. I'm gonna open it back up real quick. Okay, watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna open it one-handed. Maybe. Come on. There it is. Watch. Watch this. Ready? Watch, 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 watch. No, now it doesn't work. I hate my life. So I've tried to film this like three times now, and it doesn't work, but I've adjusted the latch, and this should be, I should be able to drop this very lightly, and it should close. There it is! Finally got it on camera. Good job. That'll be a wrap on the European rat support. I'm very, very pleased with it. The kind of funny part about it is, you and I will know it's there, but the normal person walking past the car will never, ever know. But we know, and that, that's all that matters. I got one last thing to do, and it involves these bad boys right here. So we're gonna continue the nice chrome and posh thing on the interior. Pull out these black AC controls, get these nice posh ones put in. Got my spotlight because it's very dark outside and also the fiance who's right there. Wow, hi. All right, so update on Korea. How is it? It's monsoon season, so it's pouring outside. And it's been pouring all week last week and it's gonna pour all week. Sounds like Florida. Awesome. Sounds like Florida. I hate it. So in like three or so months, I'll be going to Korea to see her, which will be super exciting because I miss her dearly, but I'll see you soon though. All right, got our faceplate here off. How you pull these controls off, there's a little hole right there. You can get like a little flat head, something like this, pop inside and push it down. That's how you get it off. If you try and just yank it off, you will most likely snap all of it and it'll never work again. Rip you. So make sure you're careful of these. See? There's Gentle. a on the side. First one going in. Do a little push. Should just pop right on. Don't break it, don't break it, don't break it. Good. Nice. First one done. All chrome dials are in, managed to not break anything. I'm very, very pleased with myself. I like them a lot. Now they match those. We'll match the shift knob, the pedals, the bezel, the door handles, soon to be the button here. My super cool little mark. Well, I think it was out of the Audi, but my little, my little vents there. All the chrome pieces. Might be going a little bit overboard. Nah, it's fine. It's totally fine. Also, I feel like I overlooked this a lot, but I have the Pink Floyd, two of the Pink Floyd uh, inserts for the dash here. Is anyone else rocking these things? There was Pink Floyd ones, the Eagles, I think the, the Beatles had some, but they're cool. I got these a long time ago. They're pretty expensive, too. Got in the video here. It's getting late, and I have a giant mess to clean up. Thankfully, this install went very, very smooth. Tomorrow, the car jacked up. Going to go ahead and try and figure out where my air leak's coming from. I, I don't know. I can't get pressure to stay in the tank. Therefore, the car can't go up and down. It's kind of been stuck where it's at. But we'll figure it out tomorrow. If you guys want any of the brand new Lord Lifestyle shirts, put on the screen right here. Everything dropped yesterday on the website right now. If you want to go there, use the code link below. Go check it out. So many new shirts, awesome designs. Make sure you check them out. Don't forget to leave it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.